replay it? Yeah. Do you go backwards? Do you do, you do that? Oh yeah, I, I, every single microsecond of what happened when I saw him, I um, play in my mind what if, if I'd have done that, if I'd have been quick enough to put the car in first, because the engine was running, um, but it doesn't really matter does it? No. Do, no. Does it help if I just say you were just simply the wrong guy in the wrong place at the wrong time and that unfortunately is life. Yeah, but you see the job I do, Tony, you become very uh, suspicious. And um, I often and still do think there was, um, there was things afoot as to why it was me. Because, you know, I was there and um, I'd met him before. But I think you're probably right. It was the wrong place, wrong time. And I shouldn't have been there. Well, he, sorry, sorry, Joe. He, I mean, he was known, wasn't he? I mean, you pulled him over a year before, was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I let me, I let me colleague deal with him. So, how unfair was that? <laughs> but you can't. There can't be a part of you that thinks that uh, you were in any way sort of targeted. You were. Oh, I, I did. repeat, the wrong person in the wrong place, at the wrong time. Yeah. You took one for the force. I'm afraid. Yeah, I did. But early days, I did think I was targeted, and um, you know, um, sub because of subjudice that. That's not the case, but um, yeah, I did. You know, I'm extremely proud. I took one for my colleagues. I always said I would. I, you know, I worked with lots of people, and would never ever have let them come into any harm's way. And that night, I took um, around about 400 bits. So, David, when you said just then that you were you were kind of suspicious about it, did did you then think that that maybe he knew it was you that was there in that car at the time? Yeah, that's what I initially thought. But then, that affords him a a great deal of. Um, Sort of uh, being cleverer than they actually was. But the only thing yeah. that, that would give that some sort of credibility, you know, amidst all your emotions there, you know, and you were the wrong person at the wrong place at the wrong time, he did have a strange kind of relationship with the police, according to some of the footage that came out on Time Tees afterwards. I mean, he almost wanted to be a cop, we understand. Oh, thankfully, he wasn't. Yeah. Oh, mm. was but um, no, I think he was a very, um, uh, very complex creature. And, you know, from sitting here at the time, I mean, some of the stories that have come out of Northumbria police in the last uh, half a year or so haven't always held them in, you know, the greatest of light through whatever reasons. I mean, you remain a shining beacon f for them. Um, you, you know, there's no other way to put it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it does upset me, you know, um, things that have gone on over the last couple of weeks in the press. But... It's human nature, and unfortunately, the the odd few slip through the net. But it's not for me to comment on, you know, the, the whys and how they do. But um, they get dealt with, you know. And rest assured, from a person that worked in the or works in the organisation, you step over the mark, and you're there held to account, and and that's the way it should be. I I don't think there's anything to to contradict that for sure. I mean, as a person broadcasting at the time and obviously trapped in the the David Rathban emotional story as Anna and I you know were that fine line between broadcasting and human being and we look at some of the stuff and obviously the police drip feed information to the public at a speed that suits them but yeah. one thing that does does remain in both our minds is that picture of him you know when he came out of of Durham that clearly was inconsistent with the image, physical image of Moat when you would have confronted him. So what I'm saying is that if the public were looking, they were looking for a different guy. Do you accept that? Oh yeah, yeah. And you know, there was nobody more surprised than me on the evening. I, I you know, I'd met him a year before, he was completely, you know, a different shape. Um, but it is what it is. He is, he is the person he was and people change. I, I'm confused in, in terms of the time, David. It's a, the, the police obviously knew at that point that he was out there and knew that he was a danger to, to, to you officers so, who, who were out there. So w was there a time in between they knew and you knew? Do you see what I'm saying there? Because I feel like, you know, was, was there a time? Because surely there must have been 15 minutes in which you should have known that he was there. And I don't want to criticise the police in public, but I feel... That I think that's an interesting question. Isn't it? And I think uh, I certainly didn't know. Um, you know, I'm sat in my patrol car and I'm uh, at the beck and call of the radio and the information I get is from my radio. So I certainly didn't know. I think the one thing that you have to say, though, is, you know, whatever criticisms you may 
have. Um, I remember you referring in this interview, I think, on Sky to you know some of the people uh, talking about the way Sue Sim looked, for example. You know, whatever um, criticisms people have, there are always going to be criticisms, aren't there? Because you don't come out yeah. of something like this without lessons to be learned, and you learn lessons because it's unprecedented, and there aren't any rules. There are police rules, but there aren't rules, you know, to legislate for a mad steroid-ridden gunman on the loose, you know, pulling in police forces from up and down the country. Yeah. There are no rules. No, so, that, so there will be criticism. Yeah, there will and there always will be. But the thing is, you've got to learn from them. And, um, you know, I, I know that there are people, be, it's being looked at, it's being uh, dissected with hindsight as things are normally done. And, and things will come out where they've learned from it. But, the, you know, the, referring back to where my chief, uh, Sue Sim, it was... You know, I heard the comments about how she looked and, you know, the, the cartoon characters, etc. But let me tell you now, she assured me from day one that nobody else would get hurt and he would be caught. She, she pulled through for me. Nobody else got hurt. And you can ridicule a woman for how she, how she looks. Um, but you, in my mind, you can't, um, you can't question her determination to look after other people. Uh, have you discovered now?